Trim Pass is an incredibly useful effect that you can use in After Effects, but it isn't available in Premiere. And that's a real disappointment because I really like to be able to animate a path, a box or an ellipse in order to highlight something on one of my videos. Uh, let me show you how you can do this by creating a motion graphics template in After Effects that you can bring into Premiere and use in Premiere and get the advantage of the trim pass effect. So I have here a couple of motion graphics templates that I've applied to this video. I'll just play it so that you can see how they highlight certain areas on the screen. You see that it animates in, stays for a few moments and animates out. And there's a second one doing exactly the same thing. Now I want to take you into After Effects and show you how you can do this yourself. So stay with me and let's get started in After Effects. We're now in After Effects and the first thing to do is to create a new composition and we'll call this Box. I want to create a 1080p composition and I want to have it four seconds long because I'm going to allow one second for the box to animate in, two seconds for it to remain on screen and one second for it to animate out. So let's create that composition. Now we want to draw the box into the composition. So we'll just take the box, the rectangle tool, and I'll just make sure that fill is set to no fill. I'll check that stroke is set to solid color. And I'll just check that the stroke width is set to five. And we can now draw the box on the screen. There we have the box that we want. Uh, you can change it if you wish. But the first thing that I want us to do is to add the trim paths effect to it. So just click on the little play button beside the add word here and go down to trim paths. And we now have trim paths added to this path or this rectangle. If we open up trim paths, I want to animate the end so that we can control how the path grows and how it contracts at the end. So having done that, I want to just start with the end being back to zero and you can see that the path is now zero length. Let's move to one second and I'll move the end up to 100%. So the path now grows over this first second and completes at the end of the first second. I'm gonna to go to three seconds on this. I'm going to put in a keyframe by clicking just here. And I'm going to go to the end and I'm going to take the end back to zero so that the path disappears again. So we now have the path growing over the course of one second, remaining on the screen for two seconds and then disappearing again at the end. I'm just going to use the keyframe assistant to ease out this first keyframe and ease in the second one. Ease out this keyframe. And ease in the last one. Okay, I'm going to look at the graph editor here and just make this a little bit more significant the way in which these ease out and ease in. So I'm just going to take this, I'm going to hold down shift just to keep this level, make the curve a little bit more extreme. Go to the next one, a little bit more extreme and the final one that. And you'll see now that when I switch off the graph editor, it does it in a much more professional way, slowing down a little bit at the beginning and at the end. So we've now drawn the box exactly the way we want it. And what we want to do now is to add some responsive design to it. We've got the animate in, we've got the animate out, but we really don't know when we use this in Premiere how long we would like this box to remain on the screen. But responsive design will enable us to manage that so that it can be carefully adjusted as we wish in Premiere. So we go to composition, we go to responsive design and we create an intro. Go back to composition, responsive design. 
and create an hydro and you'll see that there are these two shaded areas at the beginning and end of our composition. These are protected areas so I'll just drag this one out to just beyond the animation where it takes place and finishes. I'm going to move the out row in the same way we have to just move it back and then extend it up to the end. So what we have here is a protected piece of animation at the beginning, a protected piece of animation at the end and an unprotected piece in the middle. And this means that when the animation is running on screen in Premiere, if you extend the time for that, if you stretch out that clip, it will stretch out the middle bit, but it will not affect the speed of the animation at the beginning or at the end. And if you contract, if you reduce the time for that motion graphics on the screen, then it will compress the middle bit, the time that the box stays on the screen, but it will protect the beginning and the end so that the animation runs at the correct speed. So that's done. That's all we need to do there. And now we need to create a motion graphics template from this composition and the way to do that is to go to window and go to essential graphics and select the composition that we're working on which is called box so let's give it a name and call it uh, box highlight box highlight okay so now we want to allow certain properties to be changed in premiere when we use this so let's do that we can go to the stroke and pick the stroke color and if I drag that up into the essential graphics panel that means we can change it in Premiere. The stroke width if I drag that up that is also something I can now change in Premiere so I can give it a wider or a narrower stroke. What I also want to do is allow the size of this rectangle to be changed in Premiere and we may not want it in the proportions that it is here so I'll uncheck the link button so that we can change the size of the vertical or horizontal dimensions independently. So I'll just drag that up and that's everything that we want to have available to us to change and customize in Premiere when we use this motion graphics template. So the only other thing to say is that it's worth putting your, your timeline um, somewhere in the middle here so that we can set the poster time which means that this will uh, appear like so and it's not really showing it all up but it will when it's in the library so we just export the motion graphics template you always have to save first and then you can decide where you want it to go i'll just put it into my demo library you can add keywords to this that might make it easier to find and i'll click ok and it's done. So that motion graphics template is now saved and it's also been put into the library for use in Premiere. So let's get back into Premiere Pro and see how we can use this. We're now back in Premiere Pro and you can see that in my demo library, this motion graphics template has appeared. I can see that I didn't title it very well and forgot to remove the word untitled from it, but never mind, it'll still work just fine. So let's assume that we wanted to highlight this little area here on the screen. So I'll just go into my graphics panel so that I can increase this a bit and then we'll just drag this onto the timeline here. And we now have the box on the timeline as we wanted it to be. And I'm just going to position it and size it correctly. So first of all, what we want to do is just click on position. First of all, highlight the clip and then click on position. And that means that we can move this around. So let's get it into approximately the right position. And then here in the essential graphics area under edit, we can change those parameters that we put into the essential graphics panel. So we can change, for example, the X dimensions of this, get them approximately right and change the Y dimensions of it and get that approximately right. And then we can, when we click on position, we can move it just to get it exactly right. If you want to be able to adjust it in a more easy way, it might be worth just then moving the anchor point right up to the top left hand corner clicking on scale and then that will allow you to scale this very precisely to get it the way 
that you want it to be. If you want to be able to do the horizontal and vertical dimensions independently, then just uncheck uniform scale and you should be able to just precisely get it the way that you that you want it to be. So we can uh, just move this to get it exactly to where we want it to be. If I now just play that little part of the clip, you'll see that the box animates in, stays for two seconds and animates out. Supposing we wanted it to stay longer on the screen than that, because I used responsive design, when I stretch that clip out, it will not change the start and end, it will only stretch out the portion where it stays on the screen. So let's watch it again. It's animated in and now it stays for several seconds and then it will animate out at the same pace. So you've created something where you can adjust the color, you can adjust the stroke, you can change the size of it and you can manage the placement of it. And that's really everything that you would want to do with Trim Pass in terms of highlighting something like this on the screen. You can, of course, do this with ellipses or irregular paths or anything else that you want to do. So I hope you find that helpful. That's how to make the, the best advantage of Trim Pass within Premiere.